Coach PJ here. I love to learn about unusual startups. And I ran across this startup. It's a vegan based startup. It is called Eat Just. Let's take a look at what he's doing to make this business a success. This is a $4 million scrambled egg. Well, it's not just an egg. It's a vegan egg made from mung beans that, well, scrambles just like an egg. Sounds good? Okay. Well, that's good. Wow. You kept a lot of that Alabama accent, huh? I try to retain a little bit of it. Josh Teacher thought if we can make plant-based milks, cheeses, and butters, surely someone developed an egg alternative. It sounds so simple. Apparently, it's anything but. Just so you know, because you can scramble something in the lab doesn't mean necessarily you can scale it. There are three numbers to look out for in this story. 3000 the amount he had in his savings when he launched this startup. 500000 his first outside investment, and $800 million, the total amount he just has raised so far. Here's how Josh Dietrich went from crashing on his girlfriend's couch to sitting atop a $1.2 billion startup called Eat Just. For CNBC Make It, I'm Nate Skid. This is Founder Effect. Josh grew up in Alabama where football is religion, and he was dead set on going pro as a linebacker. You're in a culture where all that is supported, so I'm going around telling people I'm going to be a professional football player. And folks are egging it on a little bit. You know, they're encouraging it. Even though he graduated at the bottom of his class with a 2.1 GPA, he landed on the football team at West Virginia, where he had a humbling experience. I realized that I probably wasn't going to be good enough to play in the NFL because the the other players, many of them were better than me, and they weren't getting drafted to play in the NFL. Josh needed a new place to direct his energy, something he could fully devote himself to, something that could fill the void in his life left by football. And I just decided, for lack of a better option, in the meantime, it would be academics. With a new challenge to overcome, Josh raised his GPA to a 4.0 before transferring to Cornell in 2002. Let's stop there. Josh is interesting because it's all about passion and energy and focus. He talked about, you know, having this passion for football and pursuing that. And when he realized that wasn't going to take him where he wanted, he had to put his energy somewhere else. Oftentimes it is about whether or not you are applying yourself. If you're applying yourself, you can do amazing things. When he decided to apply himself to academics, he immediately transformed his grade. But if his grades weren't there before, it's because he didn't have an interest and didn't believe that they were important. That's true for anyone in business. You put your time, which is your most valuable asset, into the things that you value. So at the time you're looking at what to do, or what to work on, you're gravitating to the things that you believe hold the most value. So take a look at that in your own business. Let's keep watching and see where Josh goes. Like a lot of college students, he wanted to find a way to give back. So he went to work for a nonprofit, which brought him to places like Liberia, Kenya, Nairobi, and Cape Town. In fact, it was in Cape Town where he came across a book that would change his life called Fortune at the Bottom of the Pyramid. What this book says is you think nonprofits are the way to make change, but you're wrong. That capitalism is a system, it is a force, and yet can do a lot of wrong in the world. But if used correctly, it can do a lot of right in the world. Yeah. And it really opened up my eyes. So he moved back to the States and enrolled in law school at the University of Michigan. And I was really soaking up a lot of these ideas around what are models, what are businesses, what are ways to use the market to solve urgent problems. So instead of you know paying attention to contract law or class or constitutional law, now my mind was really rolling about these things. What does it look like? What does it look like to start a company? But it was a childhood friend and devoted animal advocate who pushed him to leverage his ambition for the greater good. I've had a best friend named Josh Falk since I was 13. And he was always in my ear. Do you know about the food system? Do you know about what goes on your plate? He convinced me that egg laying hens were some of the most abused animals in the food system. Together, they came up with a simple question that would help our feathered friends. Can a plant scramble like an egg? That sounds like a question you would ask your friends while you're like smoking weed in the backyard. It happened like, it kind of take you into the conversation where I would say, Josh, all right, um, what is... What animal out there do you think needs the most help? And 
Josh would say, egg laying hens. I would say, tell me more. And he said, well, there are tens of billions of hens that are laying eggs. There are over a trillion eggs that are laid every single year. It's really challenging to replace them. And so remember, I'm coming from also this experience of fortune at the bottom of the pyramid, CK Prahlad, seeing that nonprofits aren't moving fast enough, trying to find my next version of football. And I'm like, well, tell me more about these egg laying hens. How much? So I'm going to stop there for a minute. So a couple things come to mind when, when we're talking about this. Oftentimes, and, and I read this a while back, is that entrepreneurism and successful businesses or successful startups come from a time of where two things kind of meet at the right time. It's all about timing. And he talks about the fact that he read this book. He talks about it, the fact that his friend had a um, vision of these egg laying hens and what needed to change. So if you think about it, it's timing. The world needs what he's going after. If he had gone after it, you know, 30 years ago, let's say, it wouldn't have been as appropriate as now when what we're talking about is this vegan element of it is way more accepted, way more prevalent in the world. And so he's going after that. But it's an interesting element that he talks about the fact that not for profits are slow moving and they're not able to make the impact that he believes that capitalism can. Uh, and I do sometimes think that there's a lot of focus on not for profits and folks want to create another not for profit or the next not for profit when really the capitalism, and I agree with him, can be a bigger contributor to the greater good often as a byproduct than a not for profit company. Let's see what he does with this. How much money do you want to put into this? How much do you have to, to, to invest to start up? I got about $3,000 in my bank account. I'm sleeping on my ex-girlfriend's couch in LA. Her name is Jill. So our, our first headquarters was on her six foot couch in her studio apartment. She gave me a timetable and she said, you got to figure it out for six months. Josh was buying plant and protein products from Target and baking cupcakes and cookies with them. Nothing worked, let alone scrambled. If he was going to find a viable egg and substitute, he needed some cash. How'd you get some money without a product? So got to talking to Josh again, and we we thought about some of these early stage investors that might be open to this. And I was able to get a meeting with um, Kosla Ventures run by a guy named Vinod Kosla and um, a guy named Samir Cole, and I sat down with Samir, and I presented this idea, and I'll, I'll pitch to you like I'm talking to Samir. Over a trillion eggs are laid every single year around the world by all these billions of chickens. It requires all this land and all this water. What would it look like if we found a way to do it much more efficiently, in a way that would taste better, in a way that would be more cost-effective, in a way that would be kinder to animals? What if we could find a plant, a bean, a grain, who knows, to do it better? And we could really build a company around that. Coastal Ventures invested half a million dollars in the idea. And that was sufficient to get me off Jill's couch. In early 2013, Josh rented a 3,500 square foot space that used to be a biker bar. It got to work. This a couple quick things there. He does not bootstrap this company. He does not do it from the ground up he goes after an investor selling a big idea, a big impactful idea. And the idea of what the possibilities were um, versus a product, something tangible, something that, that someone can see and feel. And he found the right investor. He found someone who bought into that idea and believed that it was possible. They just needed to identify it. So not your typical startup, but not a bad way to go. It does require you to think about what are you going to do with that half million dollars? Because it has to get you to a place of you've identified the, you've validated, you've done some kind of proof of concept or validation of the idea to know that it is viable or that you are on the right track because that's how you get additional funding or that's how you continue to move forward. So let's see what he finds out. First purchases were a ladder and an oven. He needed to find a plant with similar protein and fat content as an egg. 
So we went on a very specific hiring spree. One of the most important things we had to realize is that to figure out a way to make a plant from an egg is going to require more than just food scientists. We also knew we needed chefs because there's something about a chef, the, the taste, the intuition that we felt were going to be really important. But then we realized chefs and food scientists are not sufficient. We need biochemists because there's something about how the protein works. We need engineers because we have to figure out a way to pull the protein from the bean or from the grain, whatever we find. So all of a sudden, you know, months into it, we need four disciplines. Then we realized, well, we also need folks that are crunching a lot of this data. Josh hired from 15 different scientific disciplines. He stole workers from Kellogg's and Unilever, poached engineers from Bay Area biotech startups, and lifted chefs from Michelin starred restaurants. I know those aren't cheap positions, so I'm guessing that 500000 went pretty quickly, but did it get you to a proof of concept? How long did it take you to land on something that you guys were like eating and feeling like it was getting closer? So I thought it would take us about a year, year and a half to find something that scrambled like an egg. That's what I thought. And it really wasn't until four or five years later where we were able to really nail it. Text so I'm going to stop there. A uh, big lesson that perseverance does pay off, but that's really hard when you think it'll take, you know, 12, 18 months, two years in, three years in, four years in, and you're still not there yet. You're still exploring. You're still progressing. You've got a very expensive payroll. You've got 15 different disciplines, he said, and everyone is focusing on it and you're not making the progress, that can get in your head. It can also get into your investor's head. So I'm really curious how he uh, kept the momentum going, how he kept the belief, and what little signs along the way helped validate that they were on the right path. Because that's a lot of investment to and a lot of trust to get where he wanted to go. Let's see what happens. Sure of an egg in the pan still tasted very beaning, but you would look at it and be like, all right, there's something here. So you're not even talking about like, we got a great tasting, great textured egg. You're like, no, no, no. You know what I'm saying? We just finally scrambled the egg. We haven't worked on the flavor yet. Oh yeah. I, I, I'm excited about the scramble. That's right. One of the most important moments in the history of the company was the first time a plant scrambled. How much do you think you spent to get to that point where you had a plant that scrambled? Probably about three to four million. Josh was about to learn the biggest lesson of his entrepreneurial life, and it cost him millions of dollars. Not understanding how this works, I see that and think, oh, we're going to be launching this in six months now. Like, we got this. We'll figure it out. Yeah, it tastes like a bean. We'll work on that. Other, but we should get ready to launch this. And that ended up being, being wrong. Stop there. Uh, interesting, the timeline. And sometimes if the timeline is so, so long, we wouldn't even pursue it. So the fact that his timeline in his head was so much shorter actually probably continued to keep him moving forward and keep his investors interested. Um, the naivety around, it'll take six months, it'll take 12 months, it'll take 18 months. This is a process and it takes longer than you expect, but being able to believe that it can happen faster does help. It does help in the uh, way in which you go after things because you are optimistic, which is mostly, most entrepreneurs are optimistic. They believe they believe in their product. They believe it's going to be successful. So they're natural optimi optimists. Let's see what he does. Just because you can do something in the lab does not at all mean you can do something at commercial scale. It wasn't until late 2018 that we launched Just Egg in, in U.S. retail. How are you getting more investment at this time to kind of keep this going? We raise capital from uh, a firm called Horizons uh, Ventures. Um, we raised another round from Coastal Ventures, from Founders Fund, from the group called the Collaborative Fund. 
and it was not different. It was the same thing. It's taking us longer than we need to. We you know, want to keep pushing to be able to do it. And we're at a stage now we've raised north of $700 million. Today, Just Egg is in tens of thousands of stores in almost every major retailer, including Walmart, Costco, and Whole Foods. All in, they've sold some 250 million eggs. But it hasn't always been easy. In 2017, Josh had to let go of his entire board. There's a feeling now, like, are we doing something wrong, right? Is the kind of team that we have, the kind of folks around us, are we set up in the way to really optimize what we're trying to do? So we sat down together as a, as a board. Uh, it was a really hard conversation. It was a rough time. We decided we got to essentially start how we're doing this whole thing. I love this approach. I love the fact that they aren't afraid to reinvent themselves from the board up and what they were doing because what they were doing apparently wasn't working the way they wanted it to, wasn't getting the results they wanted. So that's a pretty bold move and it takes a lot of courage to do that. So the fact that they tackled that is pretty telling. Let's see how he tackled that and what the result was. Um, so we, um, re- there was a period of time where I was the, the sole member of the board. <laughs> I would imagine that the pressure of not putting a product out would have weighed heavily on you every month, every year, every email that you got that was like, hey, just checking in to see your progress. First and foremost, it, wasn't, it just wasn't good internally. Um, the company started to make an egg from a plant happen that we eventually you know, called Just Egg. But we just couldn't figure out how to do it. The vast majority of my energy was what can we do today to increase the probability that it will happen. In 2017, the company began pursuing a line of cultivated meat. Currently, good meat is sold in Singapore, but the company plans to begin production in the United States in early 2023. Don't sleep on good meat. We've become the first company to ever receive regulatory approval and to go on and sell real meat without any of the slaughter on it. For Josh, he says the difficulty of scaling his business is challenging him in the best possible way. I just wanted more of my energy. You know, I miss plenty of tackles playing football, right? (laughs) But when you miss a tackle and the running back, you know, gallops on for 40 yards, the fewer seconds you can spend in a moment of regret and the quicker you can just say, all right, like next play, the more effective you're going to be. I love his entrepreneurial spirit because it is about making mistakes and it's less about the mistakes. It's more about where do you go from there and how do you recover and how do you get up and and move forward? He's got a lot of perseverance. He's been at this four or five years of just churning and churning and working and working and working and reinventing and reinventing. And when something's not working, he's trying something else. So as you are looking at different entrepreneurs, I like this guy because he really shows that it's an overnight success to, you know, is not easy. It's not easy and it's not overnight, but it looks like it in the end, but all the hard work he just demonstrated, all the money, all the energy, all the sleepless nights that he probably had trying to uh, make sure that the right things were being done. Kudos to, to him in creating Just Egg. This is PJ. If you like what I had to say here today, put a comment, subscribe to my channel below. If there's a particular video you'd like me to react to, add that to the comments as well. And until next time, your business profit, helping you get the business you deserve.